Readings for the first Sunday of Advent. The first reading is from the book of Isaiah, the prophet. You, God, are our creator, our redeemer. You are named forever. Why do you let us wander, O Lord, from your ways and harden our hearts so that we revere you not. Return for the sake of your servants, the tribes of your heritage. Oh, that you would rend the heavens and come down with the mountains quaking before you. While you wrought awesome deeds we could not hope for, such as they had not heard of from old. No ear has ever heard, nor eye ever seen any God but you doing such deeds for those who wait. Would that you might meet us doing right, that we were mindful of you in our ways. Behold, you are angry and we are sinful. All of us have become like unclean people. All our All our good deeds are like polluted rags. We have all withered like leaves, and our guilt carries us away like the wind. There is none who calls upon your name, who rouses to cling to you, for you have hidden your face from us and have delivered us up to our guilt. Yet, O Lord, You are our creator. We are the clay and you the potter. We all all are the work of your hands. The word of God. The psalm response is, Lord, make us turn to you. Lord, make us turn to you. O shepherd of Israel, hearken from your throne upon upon the cherubim, shine forth, rouse your power, and come to save us. Lord, make us turn to you. Once again, O Lord of hosts, look down from heaven and see, take care of this vine, and protect what your right hand has planted, the shoot you raised up as your own. Lord, make us turn to you. May your help be with the one of your right hand, with the chosen one whom you yourself made strong. Then we will no more withdraw from you. Give us new life and we will call upon your name. Lord, make us turn to you. The second reading is a reading from the first letter of Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, grace to you and peace from God and the Lord Jesus Christ. I give thanks to my God always on your account, for the grace of God has bestowed on you in Christ Jesus, that in Christ you were enriched in every way with all discourse and all knowledge, as the testimony to Christ was confirmed among you, so that you are not lacking in any spiritual gift as you wait for the revelation of our Lord Jesus Christ. God will help you firm to the end, irreproachable on the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. God is faithful, and by God you were called into intimacy with Jesus Christ our Lord. This is the word of God. God's peace be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Jesus said to the disciples, 
Be watchful, be awake, be alert. You do not know when the time will come. It is like people traveling abroad. They leave their home and their place and place their servants in charge, each with a certain task, and orders the gatekeeper to be on the watch. So watch, therefore. You do not know when the owner of the house is coming, whether in the evening or midnight or at cockcrow or in the morning. May the owner not come suddenly and find you sleeping. What I say to you, I say to all, be awake and watch. The Gospel of the Lord. As you know, there are two Christmases. One begins on Black Friday. It's a mad frenzy of commercialization and shopping and shopping until the holiday of Christmas. The other began about 10 minutes ago when Natalie lit the candle, the Advent candle. And actually, Natalie, your name means Christmas. So that, you're the perfect person to do this. Thank you so much. So Natalie got us going with the first Advent day. And this is a time of, it's a spiritual time of peace and prayer and patience and kindness until not the holiday of Christmas comes, but the person, Jesus, comes. And Jesus himself gives us the theme of these next four weeks of Advent. Here's the theme. Be watchful, be alert, stay awake, be ready. Be watchful, be alert, stay awake, be ready. Be ready for unexpected divine encounters. Be ready for surprising intrusions of beauty in your life. In other words, it's going to be a good time the next four weeks. So stay awake and don't miss it. Now, I, uh, Joe read the Isaiah reading, and one line says, Lord, open up the heavens and come down. Do you notice anything off about that? Lord, open up the heavens and come down. See, that's old thinking about God, that God is way up there, and we've got to plead with God to cut through all those barriers and come down to reach us. A missionary in India said it's easy to tell the Christian kids from the Hindu kids. He says, all I do is say, where is God? And all the Christian kids point up, and all the Hindu kids go in. Richard Rohr was walking through the fields of the monastery one time, and there's an old monk out in the field, and he goes, Richard, make sure you tell the people that God isn't out there. God isn't out there. I had to change the rubrics of the Mass. Right before the consecration, the priest extends his or her hands over the elements and says, let your spirit come down and bless these gifts to make them holy. Well, God's spirit doesn't have to come down from any place. God's spirit is right here flowing through us. We just need to be aware of it. So I changed it to let us feel your spirit consecrating us along with these gifts. Let us be aware of your spirit because your spirit is here all the time and we don't have to call you out from outer space. God is not an elsewhere God. God is not a distant God. God is fl flowing through our, our veins. So Advent is a time to be aware, to feel God's presence right here. Another name for God is, God has a lot of names. Uh, my favorite is beauty. Beauty is another name for God. So be ready for unexpected intrusions of beauty in your life. And actually, this just happened to me two days ago on Friday. Jeff Reamer came over to tune my piano, and I love how the piano sounds after, after it's tuned. And so I went right in there and played my favorite Rachmaninoff's second piano concerto. And as I was playing a few lines of it, I had to stop because I started to cry. It is so beautiful. It is so dreamy and romantic and emotional and spiritual. Before he composed this concerto, Rachmaninoff fell into a three-year clinical depression. It was a terrible time, awful. He had writer's block, did a lot of heavy drinking. He received psychotherapy and support from his friends and family. And he dedicated this concerto to his physician, who restored his self-confidence. And so the concerto is a confirmation of his triumph over a very, very dark night of the soul. His struggle gives this masterpiece extra spiritual character. It's born from a heavy heart. And that's why it brought me to tears. It was, it was an experience of God. It was so beautiful. And God is be beauty. So be ready for unexpected intrusions of beauty like this. 
Roxanne Ziegler often plays the harp for people who are dying in hospice care. Now, it's not about giving the family a concert to distract them. It's about cradling them with beauty as they have their final conversation. God's presence is tangibly present right there th through her soothing melodies. The famous French sculptor, Auguste Rodin, always told his students, don't go looking for a good-looking model. Don't go looking for somebody perfectly proportioned. Take anybody you come across, because everybody is beautiful. Beauty is the inherent goodness in all things. It's the God, the divine, in all things. The human soul is hungry for beauty. We seek it everywhere. We seek it in music, in art, in clothes, in companionship, in intimacy, in gardening, in cooking, in the full moon last night. Did you see that? It was gorgeous. It reminded me of St. Francis of Assisi. There was a full moon one time, and he rings the, about 2 o'clock in the morning, he rings the church bell, and all these people come out in their pajamas into the piazza, and they're wiping their eyes, and they say, what's going on here? He goes, look. And they go, yeah? He said, it's a full moon. Why are you sleeping? So I think of that every time there's a full moon. We've got to be aware of the beauty that's breaking into our lives. So we experience beauty. It's a, there's a sense of homecoming. It meets the, the needs of the soul. So beauty created us. Beauty made us beautiful, period. Beauty made us beautiful, all of us. To love somebody is not, first of all, to do something for them, but to reveal to them their value and their beauty. People who come through Jennifer House, Nielsen House, Grace of God Recovery House, often say to us, you love me before I could love myself. They say that over and over again in different ways. You love me before I was able to love myself. One of those people was Simone Parsons. And Simone said, when I was five, I wished I were a white man. And later, I wished I were a white woman. Then a little later in my life, I wished I were a black man. But a black woman? In my mind, that was way at the bottom. But today, I love my skin and I love my gender because I am a child of God. And no matter what I look like, I know I am beautiful and blessed. Well, now that Kamala Harris will be the first black woman vice president, black women like Simone Parsons will hopefully know sooner in their life that they are beautiful and blessed. And now that Wilton Gregory, yesterday, became the first black American cardinal in the Catholic Church, black Catholics will know that black Catholics matter. And that their call for justice for people of color and people on the margins will have a more prominent prophetic voice coming out of Washington. Beauty shines through everybody, not just some of us. Thich Nhat Hanh said, the miracle is not to walk on water, but to walk on the earth in the present moment and to appreciate the peace and the beauty that is right there. That's the miracle, not to walk on water, to walk on the earth and be in the present. During Advent, we can be on the lookout for beauty, which is God. Whether it be in music or art, or the face of your child sleeping, or your grandchild sleeping, or the face of a person who's different from you, or the smell of coffee or tea brewing, or the laughter of friends, or the person six feet away from you in line at the grocery store. Be aware of the presence of God. Now, during Advent, there are three spiritual disciplines, prayer, patience, and kindness. Prayer, patience, and kindness. First, prayer. We always recommend having an Advent candle. So buy a new candle and light it every morning or every night. I lit mine this morning. Drink coffee or tea or hot chocolate or whatever and just do it for 10 minutes. No need to say anything, just no words. Just sit in front of the light and do it in silence, the language of God. You know, it's no coincidence that many religions hold festivals of light in the dead of winter. The act of lighting a candle is actually a light, a, an act of hope. Every time you light a candle, it's an act of hope. In fact, some say that the miracle of Hanukkah was not that the oil lasted eight days, 
it was that somebody had the hope to light it on the first day. Every time you light a candle, it's a sign of hope. Maybe do some spiritual reading during Advent. When Martin Luther King was asked, what books influence you the most? He said, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Take one of them, Matthew, Mark, Luke, or John. Just read one chapter every day and until Christmas. Let these words be food for your soul. So prayer is the first discipline. Patience is the second discipline. Wow. The whole world is practicing patience right now because of COVID. Thanksgiving was already much different for everybody. Monica Anderson, she said, I usually cook for 32 people. This, this Thanksgiving was just Bob and me. We can accept a different kind of Christmas, too. At Spiritus, we had to forego the in-person masses because of the spike in, in corona. And you see in Monroe County yesterday, it was 515 new cases. It's unbelievable. So this is the time to hunker down. We have to be patient with live streaming until in-person is allowed again. But help is on the way. We know that vaccinations are coming. We need to stay isolated for a few more months and avoid gatherings where COVID spreads. But through our patience, we will have a better time in the future. So patience is the second spiritual discipline, prayer, patience. And the third one, kindness. It's time to be kind. We can be kind by reaching out to the hungry. You know that food insecurity has tripled during the COVID time. Hunger rates are even higher for Black and Latinx households. So giving to places like Food Link and Salvation Army are very welcome acts of kindness. We can reach out to shut-ins, can't really visit them, but maybe send a, a card. People are finding creative ways to stay connected through Zoom and FaceTime and window visits and patio visits and drive-bys, trying to make those connections. A woman in Rhode Island was unable to visit her 92-year-old mother in a nursing home. The mother was dying, and the daughter didn't want her to die alone. The only ones who could see her were employees of the nursing home. So she got creative. She became a laundress at the nursing home. She got a job there. And as she made the rounds, removing bed sheets and putting fresh towels in the rooms, she was able to see her mother several times a day. How was it for her? She said, well, for one thing, <clears throat> it was good to have a job that had a beginning and an end to it. She said, my real job is a, a therapist, and the results are very much uncertain. But here, there, you, you start this and you finish it. She said, but more importantly, even though the work was hard, it would have been harder to see my mother die with out having her see any of her family. And I did have some quality time with her. I had no regrets. She worked there until her mother died two weeks ago. Kindness is the third discipline of Advent. Advent and adventure come from the same root word meaning to come toward. We are coming toward the birth of Jesus. But it's not about the arrival that matters so much as the journey all along the way. It's an adventure. So stay alert and pay attention. Be ready for those intrusions of beauty in your life. Enjoy these weeks. Happy, happy Advent.